Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? This is Dr. John Belkowitz, and we've got a fun little project for you here today. We're going to be making a higher-end glow-in-the-dark grout. Now, uh, this is a project that we started, oh, I, I think it was vlog number like two or three, and the idea there, I, I wanted to jump to this mix right away, but we had to go with that lower end version that you could make going to Home Depot and Walmart. But now that we've gotten past that, we've gotten some great vlogs out there, I really wanted to get back to this higher end glow grout. And when I say higher end glow grout, a denser, a uh, brighter glowing, more durable version of, of what we created. And what we created was great. Um, you know, with playing with it a little bit, you could use that to do your, your tiles in your bathroom, in your kitchen, you know, seal it up nice, and, and it'll definitely create a, a, a good looking backsplash for you. You, you could possibly even do stepping stones or, or things that'll go out in the garden, albeit they might not last too long in the elements. So today we're gonna be making something that, uh, you know, it's pretty darn cool and we bring these to, to shows whenever we go. Uh, and I'm not going to go into too much detail on the mix design. That will be included in the section below. Um, but what I am going to go into is why I use the materials that I use. And the first one, the most expensive thing. Now please bear in mind the lower end version is, is what you can make by getting materials from your local you know schmokel places, your Walmart, your Home Depot, so on and so forth. This stuff a little bit harder to get. This is meant for the folks in the industry who have connections to people who can get the materials um, that you would normally see in your ready mix concrete plant. So first thing that I'm using that's out of the ordinary is an ordinary Portland cement, but it's it's a white Portland cement. Now this is a Lehigh cement, and one of my buddies who blends materials was gracious enough to give me a, a 94 pound sack or a 92 pound sack of this stuff. So I'm using about 2,400 grams uh, of this, and the next piece of that is my water to cementitious ratio, and I'm using an extremely low water cementitious ratio, coupled with a very high content of a high range water reducer. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm trying to create a denser mix that's gonna be stronger and last longer. Uh, let me get these bad boys over here. Yeah, and we like to put sandwich bags on stuff, you know, just to keep things out of it. Anyway, um, the next thing that I'm using is a non chloride accelerator. Um, I always like using this in combination with a um, colloidal silica and it does two things that I really like. It creates almost like a hydrogel where it kind of locks everything in place and then you have this combination of uh, your, your degree of cement hydration kicking off complemented with a colloidal silica that increases the consumption of calcium hydroxide for the production of more calcium silicate hydrates through something called pozzolanic reaction. So these two work real well together. Um, I put a dash of uh, a lightweight aggregate, uh, a soda lime borosilicate, it's uh, called Poravere. Uh, it's a, a German company that makes this lightweight aggregate and, and I use the 0.04 to 0.125 millimeter and I'm putting, um, what is that, 50 grams of this jazz in and then you don't have to put that in. I do that just to make the, the, the composite a little bit more homogeneous, to push particles apart. Uh, and the next piece I'm going to put in there is um, my glow prop. Now this stuff you can get off of Amazon. I got uh, 60 grams of a sky blue in the dark pigment, dark pigment powder. My favorite color is blue. And then again I'm using that, just that glow product that we got from Home Depot. That gives you your instantaneous glow that lasts about 10 to 15 minutes. This stuff is going to last you 9 to 12 hours. This is pretty good stuff. Um, and what else do I have less? Ah, my defoamer. Now, the one thing that we find with acrylic polymers is that they tend to increase the air uh, development, the, the entrapped air, these big air bubbles in our grout. So I like to use this defoamer. Uh, 30 grams of it to, to knock that air down and again create a more dense mix. Alright, I'm gonna get to it. Let's go mix. Oh, and I'm using the regular Hobart uh, mixer and uh, I'll just be following uh, 
uh, a modified version of C305 and basically you're mixing all the materials in until uh, you get that homogeneous mix and it's going to take anywhere between 6 and 10 minutes depending on the size of the mix uh, and how much of these bells and whistles you've got. Alright, you ready to start mixing? Here we go. That was some awesome mixing. Um, got a great looking mix. Um, and you know, if you want it a bit stiffer, something that you could put up on the wall instead of what I'm gonna be doing with it, and I was looking for more of a, a self-consolidating, um, flowable grout. And come on now, like, I mean, this is just beautiful. And the chemicals that we used they're designed so that everything's going to stay together. It's not going to separate down or go pull to the top. Um, and then we also use stuff to kill the, um, the air because we don't want bubbling and beating. And, and there is going to be some bubbling from the mixing. You know, we are using a, a higher shear mixer than what we normally use for 305. But that being said, this is a beautiful mix. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and pour this into... Uh, some molds and we'll get this going. And the reason why I keep it mixing is because it does have a, a non-chloride accelerator in it and it, it does have a tendency of, of gelling up with the colloidal silica so I would rather um, uh, I'd rather just keep it going and stopping from gelling uh, than have to bring it back to life in the uh, in the mixer you know, later on down the road. Okay, so that was uh, that was it for today. It was a great mix. I really, really enjoyed doing that. Uh, it went together well. I had no problems mixing it. There was no chunks, no lumps. It was fluid. Towards the end, it did start gelling up a little bit. But what I just do is I roll it, I shake it, and then it you know becomes a fluid again. Um, you know the the greatest test of it is. Anytime you're mixing it, you got to check for segregation. Uh, one of the things that you don't want is separation of the mix because then you won't gain that strength. So, uh, you know, I had no problems with segregation. I never saw dropping out of the, the paste or the binder and a separation of some type of fluid. It was just a, a really beautiful mix. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit and gel up for maybe 10, 15 minutes and then I'll throw some saran wrap on it. Uh, insulation on top of that and then go ahead and throw some uh, plywood over it and a sign do not touch and I'll rip and strip it at 24 hours. Go concrete.